It's now time for a devotional thought brought to us by Pastor Mark Finley. Wine, alcohol, is not very popular in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, wine is a mocker. Intoxicating drink arouses brawling. What's a mocker mean? It means it deceives you. You drink a little wine, affects the forebrain where conscience, reason, and judgment are located, and you're deceived. It's, wine is not very popular in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, raises some questions. Who has woe? Is, do you want that? Who has sorrow? Uh, how many you want sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger long at the wine. Those who go in search of mixed wine. Do not look upon the wine when it's red. That's when the juice is fermented when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Wine is not very popular at all in the book of Proverbs. You know, I've read one statistic that was really interesting. Two out of every five people that begin drinking alcohol become problem drinkers. In other words, they either lose work because of their drinking, they either become so inebriated that it leads them to premature disease and ultimately death, or they have problems in their marriages. Two out of every five people that start drinking experience that. What if you had a German Shepherd dog that only bit two out of every five of your guests? Would you have too many friends that wanted to visit your home? Obviously not. There's a dangerous and shocking claim of the World Health Organization, it's called WHO, WHO, regarding cancer and alcohol that has recently come to the forefront. The World Health Organization says that the risk of cancer starts, now get this, with the first drop of alcohol. Now, I'm not saying that as a preacher. This is World Health Organization. Then they go on to conclude, and this was reported in Lancet, which is the journal of the British America Medical Association, Therefore, no amount of alcohol can be called safe for human health. According to this WHO statement published in Lancet Public Health, I'm quoting, when it comes to drinking alcohol, there is no safe amount that does not affect health, according to Dr. Karina Faria Borges, acting unit head of the Non-Communicable Disease Management and Regional Advice. She said, we can't talk about so-called safe levels of alcohol use. It doesn't matter how much you drink. Drinkers run the health risk with the first drop of any alcohol they drink. Again, she is affirming this report out of Lancet, affirming what the, Nation what the World Health Organization says. We cannot say that moderate drinking is safe for, for health. Uh, that's been said for, for, for decades. We continue. She says, more boys with cancer are being diagnosed than girls in India. And Lancet says there's a direct link between alcohol and this cancer. According to the report of, of Healthline, a recent study has revealed that there's a direct link, amazingly so, between carcinogens and the development of a variety of kinds of cancers and alcoholic beverages. Drinking alcoholic beverages such as wine and beer increases the risk of, can you believe this? Seven different types of cancer. Inclu it increases the risk of mouth cancer, throat cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, liver cancer, cancer of the esophagus. The research has also found that most people in America are suffering from, from the disease, but they don't even know it. They don't even know about the danger of alcohol. The study that I'm quoting was done under the direction of William uh, Klein, who was the associate director of the National Cancer Institute of America. And uh, he says that some people think that drinking wine is beneficial for health, but it is not so. See, some of those early studies, you may have been familiar with them, said that drinking alcohol in moderate amounts is beneficial for your, um, for your health and it's beneficial for your heart. That is simply not true. Now, 
it is true that there is something called reversisol in grapes. And that reversisol can be helpful to the heart. And uh, so that's why earlier studies that said moderate drinking might help the heart were largely based on this idea of the reversisol, the, the, the product in the grapes. Uh, the earlier studies, incidentally, were flawed because they were done on animals, and uh, particularly on rats and mice. And rats and mice consume and digest and uh, assimilate uh, alcohol differently than human beings do. So those studies largely now have been uh, put aside, the earlier studies that talked about the benefit of, uh, of a little alcohol for the heart, because of the higher risk of these seven types of cancer from alcohol. And uh, citing U WHO's National Agency on Cancer, they said, it is a mental dependence that rationalizes people to take more or fewer poisons like alcohol, while alcohol puts them at a higher, high, the highest risk of cancer. This new study also revealed that consuming alcohol increases not only the risk of cancer, but it increases multiple other diseases and that people are not aware of it. Heavy drinkers, of course, we've known for years, have had higher risk of cirrhosis of the liver. And um, in 3 John, Chapter 2, our Lord puts it this way in 3 John 2. He says, Beloved, above all things, I wish that you prosper and be in health. God longs for you to be in health. And he knows that alcohol affects the forebrain. And as it affects the forebrain, you become less capable of making wise, healthful decisions. And as you become less capable of making wise, healthful decisions, you continue to drink more and more and more, which predisposes you to these different types of cancer and varying other diseases. This is why Paul in Romans chapter 12 says, I beseech you therefore, in other words, I beseech you, I urge you that you present your bodies. The word for bodies there is sumata in the Greek language. It means the total sum of everything you are, uh, your, your mind, your body, your spirit, as a living sacrifice unto God. Paul says, I beseech you, I urge you to come. Present your body. Can I honestly present my body as a living sacrifice to God? when I am hypnotizing, anesthetizing my brain through alcohol so it cannot receive the impressions of the Holy Spirit. Why is it that people who, have, who drink, why is it that they feel that there's no uh, health consequences to drinking and it's just something that's kind of like a sedative that calms them down? It's because the alcohol is affecting their forebrain. The more you drink, the less capable you are of analyzing the, the scientific information that points out the harmful effects of drinking. The more you drink, the less capable you are of hearing the voice of God to your heart. The more you drink, the less capable you are of the moving of the spirit on the brain. The only safe way is God's way. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. Whoever is deceived thereby is not wise.